Hello, thank you so much again for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to talk about how to simply turn a digital camera into a hyperspectral camera. A hyperspectral camera consists of a larger number of channels as opposed to a, a digital camera which only has three channels. So the, so the amount of information that we get out of a hyperspectral camera is a lot higher than uh, the, uh, the counterpart digital camera. So uh, we're going to talk about it, how we could simply turn the, this digital camera into a hyperspectral camera, but we should also note that this is only for the visible part of the spectrum. And uh, in other words, it goes from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer. For us, it's at 10 nanometer interval, which is sufficient enough for uh, color reproduction purposes and other purposes like identification of material. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about how we can turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera. Hyperspectral cameras are capable of capturing the spectral reflectance of objects in a way that the camera captures an image, but the image contains the spectral reflectance information for each pixel or point in the image. The spectral reflectance could be very useful, especially in identifying the objects we're looking at. Hyperspectral cameras are usually very expensive and not everyone could afford them. Here is an example of, of an image captured by hyperspectral camera as opposed to an ordinary digital camera. As you can see, uh, we only have three channels when it comes to ordinary digital cameras, red, green, blue. But when it comes to hyperspectral camera, we have a lot more than that. And it would cover the whole spectrum that we are showing here. But how can we turn a, a digital camera into a hyperspectral camera? We need to have a camera that is capable of outputting raw images and also a standard color chart with known spectral reflectance values. Now, now there are uh, a few stages that should be taken which are explained as follows. Also mathematical equations are presented making the understanding of this pr process easier. The mathematical equation could also help you code the process very easily either in MATLAB or Python, whatever your choice is. And uh, here is the color chart that, that we're going to use. Macbeth color checker, classic Macbeth color checker. This chart contains 24 patches. The mean patch value in terms of RGB camera response for each channel is computed. At the end of this process, we should have a matrix of size 24 by 3, where 24 stands for each patch and 3 stands for RGB channels. It should be noted when a digital image of the color chart is captured, the image is of size m by n by 3, where m and n stand for image size captured by the camera. To compute the mean response value, for each patch, the average RGB values of each pixel inside each patch is computed, which would lead to the same matrix as here, 24 by 3. The mean patch value for each color channel. It will be also important to capture the image in a controlled environment in terms of lighting in a way that the light source would make a 45 degree angle with the chart and the camera would be at the angle of zero as shown here. So this is the camera which is denoted as color detector and uh, this is the color chart and the light source at the angle of 45 degree. It, it will be better if you have two light sources so that the lighting would be as uniform as possible. Now, the next thing is to linearize the camera photometric response so that they would be linearly related to y stimulus value. 
to do that a transfer function is derived based on a based on fitting a relationship between the luminance factor and normalized digital counts of the neutral patches what do i mean with that Lumina luminance factor refers to y over y n as shown here where y stands for tristimulus value of the neutral samples and y n is that of the perfect reflecting diffuser in other words y n is one perfect reflecting diffuser normalized digital counts as shown here which is from 0 to 1 they refer to digital count divided by 255 for 8 bits per channel system so this as you can see the photometric response of cameras are usually nonlinear but we have to linearize that and uh, the linearized camera response for red green and blue channels are shown as here the transfer functions f the transfer functions are usually a polynomial polynomial function of some kind and uh, r len g len b len they denote the linearized camera response now these linearized rgb camera response are used in the process of spectral deflectance recovery using a simple set of inverse method which could which would lead to the hyperspectral camera that we're talking about now let's talk about turning an rgb camera into a hyperspectral camera let's say we have all the spectral reflectance information of the color chart in the visible part of the spectrum in a matrix called R whose size is 24 by 3 where 24 stands for the patches uh, the patches of Macbeth, Macbeth color checker and 31 refers to the spectral reflectance data from 400 to 700 nanometer at 10 nanometer interval 10 nanometer interval is sufficiently enough for color reproduction purposes we also have a matrix of size 24 by 3 which contains the linearized RGB camera response shown by RGB LEN. So using the SEDU inverse equation shown here uh, we obtain a matrix M which transfer RGB color data to the spectral reflectance data. This matrix M is, is the matrix that turns the RGB camera into hyperspectral camera and PINV here stands for SEDU inverse therefore uh, having the matrix M we could easily turn any digital camera into a hyperspectral camera by simply multiplying the RGB image by matrix M but how we do that here's an example let's say we have an image of size M by N by 3 the image could be a picture of anything we're interested in knowing the spectral reflectance data at each pixel. We first change the image into a shape M N by 3. So the, 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 the image was reshaped into a matrix which has three columns and uh, a number of rows M by N. So then we, linear, we linearize it, we linearize this matrix using the equation we already came up with. After that, when, after we linearize it, which we shown with A prime, uh, the linearized camera response are multiplied by matrix M that we came up with here, which leads to the spectral reflectance data, uh, which has shown, which has been shown by matrix here, which has uh, 31 uh, columns and M by N row so the number of rows is, is the same as here but the columns are more because this is only three which is RGB but this has 31 columns which stands for reflectance data so uh, now that we have uh, multiplied we have the spectral d data we have to still reshape the new matrix into a hyperspectral uh, image of size M by N by 31 which is the hyperspectral image that we have acquired using this approach so we input an RGB image with three channels but we got a hyperspectral image 
with 31 channel. That's how we do a very simple algorithm. Thank you so much again for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something useful. And if you like the video, hit the subscribe and also share the videos with others that you know that you think they might be interested. And thank you so much again. Have a nice day.